Okay, so uh, I'm doing a series of tutorials about some of the more advanced features of Whirligig. Uh, today I'm going to look at the non-VR based Whirligig application. So, uh, Whirligig from the start has had mouse control as you can see. Now this mouse control works as a virtual mouse option within the uh, VR environment. You can see it won't go outside of the window. Uh, one of the things you don't want in uh, VR is to accidentally move your mouse outside and click off and focus. However, this isn't really the way in which a actual uh, video player would work uh, without VR. So I've created several options to improve the uh, playback and usage of non-VR uh, related uh, usage of uh, Whirligig. So first off, uh, let's click on the settings and you'll see that there's an interface button here. I click on there and then right here we have monitoring. Now monitoring is where you can set up Unity, not Unity, you can set up Whirligig uh, to be more non-VR based. Uh, this will also continue to work within the VR. So let's click on monitoring and have a look. Uh, so the first thing we can see here is we've got full screen. So if I hit that, you'll see that it goes immediately to full screen. Hit back that and it will uh, dis uh, dissipate. Now you can add this to any of the um, uh, buttons so you can uh, at the moment I think it's set to F11 uh, so if I press F11 yes full screen uh, now uh, desktop mirroring uh, again sometimes you don't want to be able to see what's going on, on the screen so if I click on that it will uh, do that and because my mouse is in the same place I should be able to click and it will come back again uh, now here is where the monitoring uh, and the non-VR usage works best. So the first thing I'm going to do is click independent monitoring. Independent monitor. So what this now has done has allowed me uh, to view and use this monitor. So it's released the mouse from its prison uh, and it allows me to use this monitor, this, uh, this display as a separate display to the VR. So it will uh, expand and contract as you would expect to do so. Uh, like so. So now we have that. Um, this will work and it will not mirror what's on the VR display. Um, if uh, So I can view and use Whirligig outside of the VR uh, and use it with just the standard controls. If somebody else is in VR they can see the actual playback and everything uh, but they won't see this more user-friendly display uh, set up in the same way it is for the uh, independent monitoring. So let me click off that and let's open up a video. So the first thing I'm going to do, we've got it works in exactly the same way. We expect the Explorer to work in the same way. Uh, if I click on Cosmic Laundry Map, great little video. And now we have, as you can see, Cosmic Laundry Map. Now, this is a predominantly 360 degree video player. Uh, so it allows you to do a full rotating around and viewing it. And this is all still within 3D. So if I click off to play it, you can see that it's playing. But something else that we get to do is move around. Now on the 2D screen, this doesn't make too much sense. But if I open up a 360 degree video, um, let me see, uh, I think that one. So this is in stereo, so I'm going to set this up so it works in the correct way. Barrel, which equals a rectangular. It's not a very high resolution, one, but as you can see, we now have movement, and we can do this. Which, if you wanted to watch a 360 degree video uh, without having to put your VR headset on, that's a useful way in which to do so. Um, again, you can use all the controls as they were before, including the depth. Now, this is a stereo, um, video. So something else that we can do is if we go back to the monitoring, we have this option here and this allows us to switch through some of the old fashioned anaglyph options. So if you've got a pair of anaglyph glasses, red and green or red and blue, you can then actually play it back with 3D glasses on your screen. Now you might ask why you want to do that. Well. Uh, there are several use cases in production. You might want to view the three, uh, 3D based on um, 
uh, without having to put a VR headset on, so you might want it for ease of use and ease of development. Uh, so let's go over some of the other options. Uh, now we've got independent monitor lock. So if I click that on, actually before I do that, I'm going to look at these parts here. So we've got mouse panning speed. If I increase that a lot and then do that, and you'll see it moves really quickly. Go back, take it right down to the bottom, and it really slowly. I hit there, it'll go to the middle. The independent monitor, VO, VR, uh, OV, uh, full, so FOV, a field of view. Uh, so if I have it like that, and you see that it is most distorted, if I change that and move it around down to the bottom, if you can see it. It zooms in, so it's actually slightly bigger. Again, if we hit reset, 60 is the same as the actual display. So in this case, you won't get a real difference. So that's how those things work. Now, onto independent monitor lock panning. So if I take this on uh, and we go like that, you can see that we are now, I cannot move the screen around. So it is locked in the direction that you're expecting it to be. Like a projection and put on this. There you go, I can't move that round. Now this is kind of uh, good if you don't want to be panning around. So for instance, if you're watching just a standard video, um, so it's, and you also want the distortion, you can do that. Or if for instance, you wanted to isolate one section of the screen. So if for instance, we wanted barrel and wanted it tilted like so, and you wanted to play it back, and uh, just wanted to see that section, you can do so. Um, so that works that way. Now, if I go back to cinema, the next option I'm going to look at, we'll turn that tilt, is a new feature that I've just added, uh, and it's set cinema mode to full screen. Now, as soon as we do this, this becomes effectively, now I'm not going to use this video because it's 360, I'm going to go back to Cosmo, I'll do that. This effectively it's turns it clean. into a standard video player. So you can now watch in the same way as well, you would this, uh, um, using this better be good. C or, um, uh, it took uh, me ages to tie that rope. And, and this allows this to work like that. Um, one thing to, I suggest is that um, screen tearing, boots. which uh, is no more need for this. Refresh, is a bit no more sheepy business. And the way in which to remove that is to go to quality and just put on vSync. And then that will move screen tearing. Oh. Uh, and again, so you still have all the options that you did before. So you can use this as a standard video player and play back all the different options that you would, uh, that you would like. So like the subtitle options, all these other elements. Now, something else that to note is sound. So if I go back to playback and I click on sound, we have audio output. Now, this would normally be hidden uh, if it was just a VR app, but I want this to be used in multiple ways. So we can also output to a 5.1 system or a 7.1 system. Um, and we've got all the options in here. I don't know whether or not we should have all the options. I'm not sure quad and surround me, but, um, but they're there at the moment. So I've got them in there. So if you have a, like a 5.1 video, uh, you can play it back and set it to 5.1 and it will recreate that. And if you've got a, a, um, a amplifier that can do 5.1, it will redistribute uh, it amongst those. Uh, I'm going to increase those uh, options as well. Uh, if I open up a video that actually has 5.1, so this is one of the best videos for that, we can see we've got the surround options. So at this point, if I change this to 5.1, so we're now in this 5.1 scenario, and if I go to surround sound, I actually have independent ability to change those options. So if I was if I was watching a film and I felt that the, the uh, audio, central audio needs to be increased, I could do so, and I could reduce um, these elements and move stuff around. So generally speaking, this is uh, this is kind of something that a lot of amplifiers would allow you to do, but you can do it per video, and it will save it. Um, and it does decode it in a certain way, in a different way. Uh, I'm going to be working further into this because I think that there's a lot of potential to make this really uh, useful and also really quite um, improve the audio of your uh, videos. So that's generally speaking the, um, 
uh, usage of Wordy Gig within the video. There is something else to note. Uh, we do have the Explorer and you can pick things from the Explorer here. However, and if I quickly find some other way of getting, getting to this, not that. Um, if I open the videos folder, just as an example, let me just have a quick look. So, got the videos folder, I can uh, simply drag and drop onto the screen and it will automatically open that video. So, it's a way in which you load videos like you would on a standard video uh, playback system. You can also set this to load automatically in WordyGig as well. So that's a really useful way in which to set something up um, uh, and sort of playback stuff without having to go through the Explorer. Um, so yeah, uh, that's the current um, current scenario and the current setup. I'm going to be working into this and making it a lot more um, comprehensive. Uh, but I hope you find this useful and uh, and I look forward to hearing your feedback because. I want this to be a player I use to watch uh, watch films and TV and all these other things. So any ideas about how to improve that for other people is very much welcome. Thank you very much and I look forward to, uh, to all of your comments. Bye.